This is season three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. I'm your host, Kathleen Dames, and over the course of our 12-week season, we will knit basic cable together. An awesome worsted weight cable pullover. Okay, hello my friends, and welcome to season three, episode seven of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Today we're gonna be talking about the body and finishing up all the knitting before we get to what I call the split and the join rounds. Um, and that's where we're gonna bring everything together. And just so you know, when you bring everything together, this is the same for pretty much any bottom up, seamless, or even seamed, but if you're working in sort of one piece sweater construction. So from here, from where we're at now with the body, and we'll have the sleeves done real soon, you can do a raglan like we're doing here, you could do a saddle, shoulder, um, round yoke pullover, uh, hybrid, shirt yoke, malgar. There are lots of different yoke constructions you can do. And they all kind of begin the same way with making three tubes or three rectangles if you're making a cardigan. Um, but any of those, you have the freedom to work on that, figure out what you want, which is what I've been doing with premium cable. And then once you join everything together, you can start the different kind of shaping that's required for different yokes. So that's very exciting. And we're going to get to that in two episodes. So next episode, we're going to do the splitting and the joining and setting side stitches and stuff. But today we're finishing up the body. I've actually finished my body. I'm finishing up sleeve two. So I didn't get stuck on sleeve island. So here I am. I've got one last cable to cross and then just a few more rounds to get it to match my other sleeve. Oh, turn it the pretty way. Um, and so some people like to do their sleeves two at a time. That's great. As you know, I recommend doing your first sleeve as your secondary gauge swatch, doing the body, and then you'll have one sleeve to knit, which is, you know, they're not that big as you learned when you did your gauge swatch. A sleeve isn't that much knitting. It's not a huge commitment. So we'll do the second sleeve, finish it up here today, and then we'll get on to joining everything together. So I know that the idea of cabling without a cable needle may still be kind of scary to some people. And I just wanna say, oh, first of all, it's only knitting. Okay, it sticks and string. Be kind to yourself, be kind to your yarn, and realize that you can do it. Um, I think I said, and I didn't really show too much about holding on to those stitches as you are uh, changing their position. And really that's all that happens with a cable, right? Is we change the position of stitches, we work them out of order. And they either go in front of or behind the stitches depending on the way we're turning that cable. And that's what we call it a turn, where we, we just switch the sides of things. So it really isn't as frightening as you think. And I'm gonna do it here right now while I'm talking to you. I'm ready to do my cable. Uh, I've slipped the three stitches, the first three stitches to the right needle. And now I'm gonna knit the next three stitches. And I, because I'm the boss of my knitting and you are the boss of your knitting, I feel more comfortable putting my needle into the front stitches. So I'm doing a front cross. So I have slipped my needle in here and slide everything down to the edge. And the thing is, if you keep that, your left index finger up close to your stitches, make sure you have enough slack in your working yarn. That way your, your stitches aren't in danger of coming out. But I like to use that left index finger to sort of keep everything close together. Um, wait, I did that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> because I want to, um, actually I didn't do it wrong at all. I did it without even thinking. So I worked the first three, I went and stuck my needle into the, the, the what's gonna become the second three, and I just slid the needle out of those worked stitches very quickly, slipped it back in. I didn't lose anything. I did it while I was talking to you. I wasn't even paying attention. Let me also say that what that means is I've done this a lot and I've practiced. And if you haven't practiced a lot, it's okay. You may be nervous, but you can do it. And the more you practice, the better you get. And now I'm doing my second three, which was the first three stitches, but we crossed them, right? And there I have crossed my last sleeve cable. So this is very exciting. I think I have a few more rounds to do to make it even. Yes, I have um, about 10 more rounds to do to match it up. 
want them to be exactly the same and that's why I'm using a um, one of these stitch row counter stitch markers at the uh, at the change of round um, so there we go everything is crossed just like it should be I even did it in the right direction this time but really honestly if I'm doing it while I'm talking to you and my brain just my hands did it without my brain thinking exactly what to do so that it just takes practice and a lot of practice helps so that is my sleeve and I just have a little bit more to go and then I'll be able to join everything together and as you can see I've got sleeve number one it's on one big piece of waste yarn you could also put it on a spare needle um, and what I'm gonna do before I join everything together is put everything put the stitches that need to be on an underarm on a different piece of waist yarn and take this out so that's something you may be a little confused that I put my whole sleeve and body on one big piece of waist yarn whereas in the pattern I tell you to set aside the stitches for the underarms and I will show you that next time with the sleeve but um, I just didn't want you to be confused by what I'm showing you here and what I talk about in the pattern. So we will set aside the proper number of stitches for the underarm. Let's see, you have the right number, the right amount of space here to make it comfortable for you. Um, and then that will happen next time. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about about the body is the bust. So one thing you should know when you are looking at any pattern, whether it's mine or somebody else's, when you're looking at the schematic and the written directions, is that the length of things in the pattern is not set in stone, okay? You need to knit it to the right length, whether it's the body or the sleeves or sock foot, whatever it is, you need to knit those to your length. When I write it in a pattern, I use a few different uh, sources for average sizes of things, okay? So when I do my patterns, um, I use the average lengths for, depending on where I want it to fall on the body, the average length for the body and the sleeves. And so if you know that you are short-waisted, you don't have to knit quite so many rows or rounds as somebody else. If you are long-waisted, keep that in mind. Or if you want a tunic length sweater, Again, remember you are the boss of your knitting, but then you'll need to knit longer. And that's where it also helps to have something like your sleeve, which is a great long uh, swatch and it's great for row gauge. And most patterns don't give you row gauge. They don't, they're not written for rows. They're written for inches or centimeters. And that's because, you know, usually you can get one or the other, you can stitch gauge or row gauge pretty easily, it's hard to exactly match both. It just is, it's a fact of humans. So that's why most patterns are written to length, but stitch counts, you know, specific stitch counts. So if you are a well-endowed lady, you may wanna consider knitting a little bit longer than the pattern says, or even longer than measurement from your underarm down to where you want the sweater to hit on your body, because the fabric is going to have to stretch over a little bit more on its journey from your hip or wherever you want the sweater to fall up to the underarm. So that's something you need to keep in mind. You could do measurements from, you know, the top of the bust down. That would, that would be another way to do it. Um, you could also put in short rows for bust shaping, but I didn't think that that was appropriate for this pattern. Um, it's really just a straight up and down pattern to my mind. But so, and also, doing the cables would be a little more complicated with short rows, but short row bust shaping is something that you can uh, explore further if you really feel like you need to make some alterations for fit. Additionally, one other thing I wanted to say, I think I've said it a few times here already that you are the boss of your knitting, but another thing that you need to remember, um, and this is I'm trying to remind myself too, is about perfectionism. And this, especially if you're watching this sort of as it's released, we are between Thanksgiving and Christmas here in the United States, or we're in December, getting ready for the holidays. Everyone's getting all ramped up and busy and hopefully excited, but it can be a stressful time of year. Knitting is not supposed to be stressful. It's supposed to be fun, right? <laughs> Even if you're adding in new skills to your repertoire as we go along, you still want to enjoy it and have a good time. And I want to remind you of something that I read uh, some time ago and I've heard from other knitters too. It's called the galloping horse test. 
And what it is, is if you can't see the error as you're galloping by on a horse, oh, let it go. Okay, so I would fix a miscrossed cable here in the bust range. I wouldn't fix a miscrossed cable probably in the back. It just, you know, it shows that you're human. It shows that you're not perfect. I think that's a, a charming thought too, um, that this is handmade, it's not a machine. Uh, no matter how lovely and even your stitches are, this is, it's a human being making this thing. So bear in mind when you're getting stressed out or you're worried about, you know, the stitches falling out when you're, when you're trying to cable without a cable needle, that you just wanna pass the galloping horse test, okay? So take a break, give yourself a break and be kind and uh, remember the galloping horse test and remember that you are the boss of your knitting. You may decide that a more erratic cable here, uh, you cross eh, every once in a while, might be better for your well-being than carefully, rigidly following the exact cable sequence. Luckily, this is a pretty easy cable and this is a great opportunity to practice and practice and practice cabling without a cable needle because you do a lot of the cables and you cross them very, very regularly so this is a great way to practice but give yourself a break okay please be kind to yourself it's supposed to be fun knitting is supposed to be therapeutic I don't like to say that you know knitting is the new yoga because that's all nonsense and that's from 10 years ago at least um, but it is therapeutic that kind of uh, physical repetition is actually great for your brain to keep doing that you've got your hands busy you've got the physical busy and sometimes that can allow your brain to relax into what we call theta waves there's a lot of great information out there about things like knitting um, that are good for you so bear that in mind also i've been knitting a lot lately i have a lot of knitting going on i want to remind you to stretch um, do some of those knitting stretches, you know, stretch everything out, give your hands a break. I gave myself a little hand massage last night and it definitely makes a difference. Right here, that thumb spot, that's a great one, but I like to sort of squeeze all the fingers, try and work everything out, take breaks if you are knitting up a storm. Because if you don't, you're gonna, you're gonna burn yourself out and then you're not gonna be able to, to do any knitting. So that's um, something that we don't want to have happen. So. I think that's everything for today. I'm going to finish up my sleeve and then I'm going to be ready to join everything together for you next week. So we'll talk about what we call the split round and that's where we set aside the underarm stitches and that kind of splits the front and back stitches of the body. And then at, right after we do that, in the same episode, we're going to join everything together onto one circular needle. So that's very exciting. Uh, we'll talk about different ways to do that, whether you have spare needles or if you're just using one needle and how to make that happen and then once we've got everything joined together it's a quick trip from here at the underarm up to your to finishing to casting off um, i think i'm going to be doing a saddle shoulder to highlight the cable um, that i've got going up the sleeve so that i'll go right up onto the shoulder here and that's kind of fun something a little different for premium cable but we've done raglans before here on the sweater and this one is a raglan again and it's pretty straightforward so i don't think you'll need to worry too much about it but of course i'll go into a lot more detail uh in episode let's see what episode is it i've got my handy clipboard here with all my information so we'll be talking about the yoke in episode nine and that's when we will talk about raglan shaping and I'll talk a little bit too about saddle shoulder shaping so that you can, if you're thinking about doing something a little different with yours, if you threw one of those cables onto your sleeve on basic cable, it might be fun to do a saddle yoke for that. So I think that's everything today. As a reminder, if you have questions, you can always leave them in the comments on the YouTube videos if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, first of all, thank you. And uh, be sure to go and rate the show and leave comments um, on iTunes. That helps me. And of course, it helps other people find the show too. But if you don't want to do either of those, the Ravelry forums are a great place to ask questions and get answers. And uh, I had such a great time on the live show. I love answering your questions and I'm happy to incorporate them into future episodes. So be sure to ask any questions that have come up. And uh, I guess that's everything. I hope you have, um, you're having a lot of fun knitting and that you will be ready to do the split and the join with me next week. Until then, thanks so much for being here and happy knitting. Bye.
This episode of The Sweater with Kathleen Names is brought to you by Filament Magazine. Next, we have the Rumble Seat Set. It's a great cluster stitch cowl. I like to wear it doubled up. Uh, it was inspired by those sort of lovely high fur collars uh, and cloth coat collars that were popular in the 30s. And then I had enough yarn to make a great little pair of wristers. Milkweed socks are worked cuff down in Woolen Rabbit. Um, I believe it's the opal yarn and did these with this beautiful milkweed lace and uh, a nice heel flap on these. So these are great socks and the sample in the magazine is adorable. The shoes that Anne put uh, on the model with the socks are just perfect. Makes me wish I had tiny feet. This is the Bonnie Beret and gloves. And I was inspired by Bonnie Parker, both the actual Miss Parker and um, of course Faye Dunaway's famous uh, performance uh, as Bonnie and Bonnie and Clyde. And so the beret is a nod to Faye Dunaway. The gloves are actually inspired by Bonnie Parker's real gloves. Uh, they are in a museum somewhere. And the fun thing about these is they are worked I-cord style from the top down. So you do each finger and the thumb, you bring them all together, and then there's this lovely chevron stitch pattern. And that stitch pattern is repeated on the beret, which is also worked top down. You start with a little bit of I-cord for the stem of your, bon your beret, your bonnie beret, and then uh, increases until you get to doing the chevron work. And then a few decreases and some ribbing to finish it off. Claudette. Oh, love this. This is worked in Harrisville, uh, Shetland. So it's a lovely, lightweight, great transitional piece. As you can see, the whole back is uh, this lovely blackberry lace, the Copperfield shawl. A lovely triangle shawl with two different stitch patterns. Um, one is a knit pearl pattern and the other is uh, this sort of um, wheat sheaf lace. And it's really, it's a nice, simple shawl. Uh, worked from the top down. So this is the bittersweet cardigan and Anne dyed up the yarn in her bittersweet colorway. Bittersweet stitch pattern has twisted stitches and uh, little, uh, they're really Irish knots. They're a little different than noops or baubles, um, but I sort of like the way they get worked better. This is Lombard. This was worked in Harrisville Flywheel, which is a great yarn. Lots of good tweedy flex in it. And it is worked uh, semi-seamlessly from the bottom up and has you set in the sleeves. Um, Jane, scooch over there. And you can see it's got this really pretty cable here on the front, flattering V-neckline. Beaten is my last design. It is a pullover in Oh, Harrisville Highland. So they're worsted weight yarn in the lovely oatmeal colorway. It is a feast of cables. You will think there's shaping on here, but there is not. Uh, it's just a snug fit here on Lady Jane, but it's got these great cables. Uh, these alternate this sort of exploding braid. Uh, it expands, you see all, all three of the th um, sort of threads that go into the braid. And then the braid is repeated in a simpler version on the sides. And then we've got lots of this lovely honeycomb. This episode of The Sweater with Kathleen Names is brought to you by Filament. Filament number one, now available at knitfilament.com. This is season three of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over the course of our 12-week season, we will knit basic cable together. Many thanks to Jen at Spirit Trail Fiberworks, Corinna at Picnic Knits, Tara Swiger and my fellow Starship Captains, and you for being part of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Don't forget to visit kathleendames.com slash the sweater to sign up for the newsletter. Just not a joiner? Purchase your copy of Basic Cable from my Ravelry shop anytime.
Be sure to share your progress on social media with the hashtags Basic Cable and KD Sweater. Questions? Comments? Visit the Kathleen Names Design Ravelry Forum today. Thanks so much for joining me and happy knitting.